Right, down the stairs we go. Yeah, the dangerous steep staircase that everyone hates when they come into the brewery. So yeah, tank one, no go I think. Anyway, here is the hot ink, hot colour ribbon, hot printer machine, uh, HP 241G. So looking at it, uh, it's obviously been used, whether they've used this for testing or not, I don't know. But the idea is this somehow sits onto our machine here and the labels run through this section here, through the middle bit there, if I can just get the uh, camera to have a peeky poo. And uh, this arm rotates and stamps whatever you load onto this, onto the machine. So dates, numbers, anything else. Uh, but they haven't really provided a lot of lettering. They've sent us this little crappy... I'm going to spill them all out in it now. Now you can see it's only half full. So I don't know if there's going to be even enough stuff on here to be in, to do any date stamping. Certainly no coding. There's no alphabet in there. So yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% happy with this. To be fair, uh, we may have to raise a ticket on eBay. I'll get the thing working first, though, and then we'll come back. Right, folks, we have taken this uh, HP 241G apart, and uh, well, right off the bat. I knew I was taking a bit of a pump when I bought this thing, but a couple of things that didn't sit right with me. One of them, I mean it works, I got it working and I got it stamping dates on a piece of paper, fine. But the motor, oh that's not too bad. It's hot though, the motor got really hot. And there was a buzzing noise coming from this control panel here. And I thought, well that's not right. And looking inside it, well, look at them big resistors there, just to dissipate heat. It's all very dodgy, and uh, while it may get away with being wired like this in China, I'm afraid it definitely doesn't come with a CE mark, and that means that when you plug this in with, uh, as Clive, BigClive.com would call it, a death adapter, then it's sending power out via these... Um, aviation plugs and there's actually 240 volts coming out of one of the two of these pins here which means if you didn't have the machine plugged in you could actually get a good old belt off of that and I think that what they've done is they've wired they brought the capacitor back in here look for the motor and I think they've wired it up incorrectly so it doesn't like it and uh, it's constantly drawing current while it's sat idle and uh, well it ain't gonna last long is it so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this to pieces and I'm gonna rejig it I'm gonna get rid of these aviation plugs here and I'm gonna make it uh, a little bit more safe for the brewery environment and probably add some new cables get rid of this kind of stuff. Like they've got a two, four, six, an eight pin aviation plug and they're actually running a heating element off of that as well. That's what those two red wires are for as well as this motor. I think it's just all far, far too much to be pushed through that plug there. So we're going to explore it, take it to pieces Put it back in a safer, more suitable manner and hopefully get rid of the buzz on that motor at the same time. Well, it looks like it's a no-go, folks. I can't do any alterations to that motor because it's operating under pulse width modulation 
out of this box and that means we can't drive it remotely because it's basically a stepper motor it's being driven as a stepper motor I believe uh, so it's something I can't dick around with I just don't know enough about it so I'm putting it back together um, having looked at a couple of videos online I'm under the impression though that the heat that's coming from the motor is because it has what's known as a holding torque so when it operates as a stepper motor it's being held in one position um, by the magnetic poles inside and they require uh, I think it's 0.25 amps or something like that to hold them there 1.25 amp so that means that there is naturally even when it's off if you like in its steady position there's naturally a uh, current being passed by it which is why we're getting that noise because it's doing it's like staying in one position fighting against itself and then when you press the button around it goes so I've learned something new today uh, and I'm pretty pleased I didn't snip any wires before I went any further because it would have been a case of uh, a lot of soldering and head scratching or chucking the bugger in the bin if I'd have cocked up then. So yeah, obviously this thing here, that's the live pin just there. So I suppose I'm going to have to make sure that the cable that they've sent is always screwed into position so there's no danger of anyone I mean no one's going to go around in there poking it anyway are they I mean let's face it nobody pokes around in these do they so why would they be poking around in them it'd be silly uh, <laughs> Matthew, after things have happened at sea anyway I'm going to try and put this box back together it's really rather fiddly and then the next thing I've got to figure out is how the sensor works for it to understand when to stamp so I've done a little bit of testing with the multimeter and this limit switch synchronizing controlling in uh, Chinese English there uh, is basically just 5 volts and ground so it's looking for a signal I'm gonna have to take the cover off the MT50 labeler and see if indeed there is a 5 volt signal going anywhere and uh, yeah wire up to that basically and see if see if she uh, see if she does the job well, I've only gone and figured it out so a little bit of hot wire in here we've got the sensor cable coming in and we've coupled up uh, these are two 12 volt lines coming to this micro switch here so we've got the positive and the positive together and then we've got um, the ground on one side which is the normally open on the micro switch for this machine and then we've got the ground on the normally closed for the SEMA so not the SEMA the uh, doodly do printer date coder so if I plug it in we don't have any labels in there at the minute, so I have to kind of do it hand. Oh, there's no way I need three hands. Let me just get a tripod. Right, this should kind of do it. So let's press this down as though we're putting a label on a can. And then the label's now finished. We then lift this up, set the can off, and boom, he stamps the next label in line ready to go around again. Oh, it's working a treat. So that's how she's going to operate. I'm pretty chuffed with that. Zip you off the tripod, nice and simple. So all I'm going to do is put this back together. I'm going to put some proper wires in there. One thing I've noticed though, because these are operating on like a um, unfiltered DC, uh, what would you call it? Oh God, diode thing, uh, bridge, rectifier bridge. We are seeing a floating voltage of about 140 volts come across the two machines. So they definitely need to be earthed together 
so they can either share this earth cable or this one needs an earth cable installed into it. It doesn't have one, even though it's uh, got one on this dodgy, dodgy plug. There's nothing connected to the ground inside here. So yeah, when you've got these uh, artificially rectified DC um, supplies, which don't have a transformer doing the work, then we do see some voltages tend to rise because there must be some feedback in the circuit or maybe it's coming from that little transformer there because there is a transformer in there as well but it's a 16 volt maybe i'm wrong maybe it is the transformer either way we're starting to see a floating voltage which we can just easily get rid of by grounding it uh happens quite often on these chinese machines i think uh, i'm surprised that there aren't more injuries but at least we've spotted it, so we'll get rid of that, we'll wire this up correctly, we'll put it back together and then I'm going to have to fashion up some type of plates, some rails to install the um, the date coder onto so it sits in the correct position so we can slide it backwards and forwards to hit the blank space on the labels, kind of not on there because that's the bottles. We don't have a label out. Anyway, there's a blank space on the labels that needs to be hit and it's quite set far back on the label itself. So we have to make sure that it all lines up. So these arms, I'm going to have to fabricate. We'll have to be big enough for that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get around to doing it today though. It's already 10 to 4. Right, I'm going to bring over my lovely little set of taps oh god get in there sunshine and uh we're just starting to tap an m6 hole into this little bit of steel so we can continue uh to make a like a bit of a mount if you like for this date stamper date printer to go on to the uh, label machine because at the minute uh, it's kind of just standalone and uh, it doesn't fit so fortunately I did have a little bit of steel stock which was exactly the right uh, width maybe not the right thickness could have done with another millimeter I think this is four mil could have done with five five or six but it is it is close enough so this bolted onto the side accompanied with a little bit of uh, voltage and then maybe I'll put a welded brace on there if uh, if I can't find a, a decent way of mounting this on otherwise I'll be dropping some side clamps down and Hopefully putting some slots in the side and that should allow me to bolt it on where I need to with the slots included. So I hope that makes sense. I'm sure it will do as we put the whole thing together. It's all in my mind at the minute. No blueprints for this one, folks. No blueprints for anything, really, is there? Let's face it. Most I ever did in terms of preparation was make some paper cones before I fabricate at the brewery tanks. Right, I'll put a bit of a wide angle shot on so I'm actually in the frame. It's half past six, thought I'd treat myself to a pint of cider while I'm doing some welding, eh? Oh, it's local stuff. It's called Scrumpy Wasp. And it always makes me laugh. Because the S on the pump clip looks like a G and people ask for a grumpy wasp. Anyway, it's rather funny. So, I've cut myself a slot in a piece of flat bar. In fact, bear with folks, I've cut two. This one, I have started to tack onto the actual uh, piece of bar that I made a minute ago. The extension bar. Kind of regretting going wide angle now, so uh, we'll just pull it in a little bit. So there you can see 
bit of flat bar, bit of flat bar with a slot on it. And what I'm trying to do is make it straight. I mean, it's got a little bit of a banana in it in that direction, but up and down, that's not bad. So I'm basically welding up my own angle iron because I don't have the right size stuff. So I'm gonna sit back down. It's going to the other bar first. But I'm going to sit back down and tack this one up, let this one cool. And the trick is, just do a little, a wee bit at a time. Just a wee bit at a time. There we go. Just, uh, I want this to focus. So we've just gone from there to there. Then we moved way down. Mr. Tack, next one. Mr. Tack, next one. Mr. Tack, next one. And then the next time I come round, I'm going to fill this from this tack from this tack, from this tack, and then let it cool in between. And the reason we do that is because then it doesn't move because stainless steel, but well you can see if you look down at the angle on there, look, it's just gone off center because it doesn't like heat. And if you put heat into stainless, God, it moves around more than uh, a Roman or gypsy like. So there you go. I'm gonna go and fetch me uh, other bit of steel and uh, might treat a bit of welding. Oh well, I've zipped you off the tripod. There she is, look. Waiting for tomorrow. So after much more fiddling around than I actually wanted to spend doing, I've actually got the whole shebang finished. It's just coming up to eight o'clock at night. I should go home. <sighs> Well, there's the finished article, folks. So, label machine. You crank the handle down. You hold it down while you apply the label. This does a spinny thing. Then when you lift it up, it's got a counter, a timer on the box, the control box, which is over there somewhere. And then after a certain amount of time, this little pivot jobby spins around and it stamps a date and a batch code in that format on the label set so expiry 10th of the 3rd 21 and then batch code I just put a load of numbers for the crack one thing I'm pissed off about is they didn't send a full set of typeface so I don't have all the fonts that I need to make sense but I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out in the future they look pretty standard anyway and they go in here I don't know if I showed that earlier on, but you pull that out and then you put your typeface in there. This whole thing heats up with that little dude there, that's an element. And then uh, it stamps this ink onto slick, slippy, slidey surfaces like polypropylene labels. Exactly what we need. So the rail that I've made, bit of angle. If I had the angle, that'd have been a neater job, but I didn't, you know. So that's what it is. It's gonna look like that. This slides all the way to there, to there. 400 mil travel, or 350. Not many labels have a width of 350. You gotta think of the circumference of a bottle. Big bottle for that kind of size. And then out here on this arm, in no man's land, is where the big label spool goes, which is over here. Uh, but I dropped it on the floor, so uh, I've just soup, got to super glue a little bit. <laughs> yes, it's been one of those days, folks. But anyway, I would like to thank you all for coming. And, uh, well, I shall see you on the next one. But what a freaking contraption that's turned out to be. See you later, boys. I'm going to sneeze. Bye-bye.